Hey Boundless, it's your friend Lisa Anderson. Have you ever been in a situation where you have been challenged as being unloving because maybe you didn't agree with someone in a same-sex relationship? Well, our own John Pearden had the opportunity to sit down with author and apologist Elisa Childers. She's the author of Live Your Truth and Other Lies to ask her that very question because she had a similar situation that she outlines in her book. And so you're gonna wanna take a look. Elisa Childers, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Author of the book, um, Live Your Truth and Other Lies, and of course, popular podcaster. So we wanted to ask you a pretty important question today. In your book, you actually talk about Glennon Doyle, who is an ex-evangelical, and she was challenged by somebody who wanted to know, how do I show you love, but yet at the same time, I don't endorse your same-sex relationship that you're currently in. Yeah. And Glennon, of course, responded and wrote back this post. And it says, We know that love has no buts. If you want to change me, you do not love me. If you feel warm toward me, but also believe I'm going to burn in hell, you do not love me. If you wish me well, but vote against my family being protected by the law, you do not love me. Thank you for understanding that to love me as yourself means to want for me and for my family every good thing you want for yourself and your family. Anything less than that is less than love. Mm. Pretty intense stuff. But yeah. if she wrote that to you, how would you res respond? Yeah, I'm really glad that you asked this question because this particular letter that she had received from her friend was somebody who she used to go to church with. So this is a lady from her previous church. And if anyone's unfamiliar with uh, Glennon Doyle's story, like you mentioned, she used to have a very popular Christian mom uh, blog and ended up writing books and went on Oprah, really popular. And then her book, Untamed, which is where this quote is coming from, is the story of her deciding to leave her husband, who had been uh, unfaithful to her in the past, but leaving him and pursuing this same-sex relationship uh, it, with uh, women's soccer star Abby Wambach. And so when her her friend from church noticed like, well, she said in, in her letter, she said, well, I really, you know, love what I see between you and Abby and I want to be able to love you, but I also feel like this tension between loving you and what the, my church tells me and what my religion tells me. And so that's where that quote comes in, where Glennon responds to her. And so there's a couple of ways that I would think about this as far as what I would do if she asked this of me, when she says, love has no buts. If you want to change me, you don't love me. If you, you know, don't do this specific thing, you don't love me. If you don't do this specific thing, you don't love me. It sounds a lot to me like what she would be asking of me is for me to change. She doesn't want the same for me. So in other words, what she's asking of me is not something she's willing to give. So what I might respond if we were friends is, you know, Glennon, I, I can appreciate what you're saying, but let me ask you a question. It sounds like you want to change me. Does that mean you don't love me? Do you love me? And what I would hope that would tease out for her is that her definition of love is very narrow. And it's almost like taking the other person hostage and not letting them be who they are. And so Glennon is defining love really more along the lines of total acceptance, not challenging anything someone else would decide to do with their life, and even voting in a way that would promote whatever somebody else wants to do. But nobody can live that way. And that's not actually what real love is. And we know that God is love. It's one of his attributes, of course. And then Paul fleshes that out for us in 1 Corinthians 13, how that looks between people. Love is patient. We all know these verses, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Uh, but there's something in that passage that's really important that Paul says. He says, love cannot rejoice in wrongdoing. And then he says, love rejoices in the truth. And so according to the Bible, love means you can't affirm or celebrate something about someone else if it's sinful or harmful. And so what Glennon is actually asking of her friend is to do something other than love. And I think every parent knows this instinctively. Every parent stands between their child and evil, whether the child likes it or not. I mean, my kids, I'll say no to something because I know that I'm protecting them from something that's going to harm them, but they don't see that. And so they just think, oh, mom, you're being mean. You're not accepting me. You're not affirming me. You're not 
celebrating my choices and what I want to do. Well, that you better believe that I'm not doing that because I love you. And so biblical love would say, I can't affirm these things about you, Glennon, but I do love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And I think that's the, the, the bait and switch there is that it's just two radically different definitions of love. It's so important, Elisa. Thank you so much. Thank you.